reading today tribal and peasants revolt and this is specific to mppsc 2020 syllabus as well as 2019 syllabus uh, all my lectures would be completely in english medium and uh, it is especially designed for all those students who are uh, facing difficulties when it come to and comes to uh, english medium with respect to these examination especially madhya pradesh psc uh, my name is anarkh jain and uh, let's begin the course first of all in this chapter uh, it stands in unit 3 of uh, new syllabus okay uh, 2020 pattern and the starting point is first uh, we'll start from the basic and we'll study what are tribals first so uh, my my uh, way of teaching would be uh, i'll dictate uh, the points and you have to just write those points okay so let's let's start tribal stands for socially disadvantaged section of the population as of now tribal communities has joint ownership of resources in this case forest mostly which invariably includes forest and land for generations okay so this is the most common element when it comes to tribals okay that is joint ownership of resources or land it can be land so our focus will be on the central zone of the tribes in india which includes the region of jharkhand orissa west bengal chatisgarh and madhya pradesh in all these tribes gond constitutes the maximum population around 74 lakhs in india then comes the bhils with 55 lakh population santhals 43 lakh population and mainas ya minas of around 21 lakh population this is as per 2001 census and not about 2011 census okay the central and the southern zone of india have around 74% of tribes in india according to 2001 census again the biggest problem the tribals are facing in india is the pressure from modernistic forces these modernistic forces include urbanization includes industrialization and democratization okay ethnic movement are causing following problems in tribes or ethnic movements where the aftermath of the problems following problems which i am going to say uh, faced by the tribals the problems are the first one was security of tenure okay the second one was loss of control over lands by tribals okay the third one one was restriction on use of forest resources and the fourth one was increased share of produce okay so these were the big biggest problems that were faced by tribals okay now the outsiders in case of tribal areas uh, especially with respect to uh, chhota nagpur regions the outsider were known as dikus d i k u s dikus okay and these outsiders were the biggest culprit in the uh, tribal way of life these dikus incl- uh, includes british administrator it took the form of revolt against british rule and the outsiders which include also the money lenders the landlords and the traders okay now starting with the first thing a first movement was coal uprising so please write coal uprising 1831 1832 okay this was one of the first uprising uh, if we see all ethnic movements included there were smaller uprisings also but the most significant one among those was coal then there was bisra movement then there was santhal rebellion and uh, these were mainly concentrated in the central region okay so starting with the coal uprising first of all it took place in chhota nagpur and singhum region of bihar as of now jharkhand and orissa so this uh, portion of jharkhand and orissa that portion was known as uh, uh, chhota nagpur and singhum regions the coal word the kol coal uprising the coal is a basically general term used for tribals of these region the chhota nagpur and the singhum region okay 
third point in these areas tribals used to enjoy independent power for centuries okay fourth point british advent in the territories and imposition of british law posed as a threat to hereditary tribal chiefs okay because the tribal way of life was uh, the tribal chief was a hereditary person okay so that way of lifestyle they were following suddenly britishers came to their uh, their their areas and started imposing british laws and this was one of the flash points which led to revolts in many cases as we will see as a result the tribal chiefs of chhota nagpur started evicting tribal peasants by giving lands to outsider for higher rents okay because britishers were demanding higher rents from these tribals the merchants and money lenders got these lands okay then this led to a popular uprising called as coal rebellion in which properties of the outsiders in this case outsiders were money lenders and uh, merchants and britishers so properties of outsiders were attacked in this coal rebellion of 1831 and 32 but there was no attack on anyone's life so you have to remember this point ki uh, there was no attack on anyone's life and only the properties of these outsiders or dikus were attacked okay and these properties include uh, land records and uh, money receipts or the, the grains they have collected from the tribals all this was property okay now plunder and arson was the chief mode of peasant protest in this case okay and to uh, clear this uh, or to control this coal uprising british army was called to restore the order okay so that's all about coal uprising we'll move to uh, santhal rebellion of 1856 5556 okay the santhal rebellion is also known as hool rebellion h w o l hool rebellion okay santhals were scattered in various districts of katak hazari bagh bankura bing bingbhum in eastern india birbhum is a place in west bengal katak is in orissa in these areas the chhota nagpur area again okay they cleared the areas around rajmahal hills and called it damin eko okay i'll just repeat this uh, this point again the santhals santhals the original inhabitant of this area of uh, chhota nagpur area they cleared the area around the rajmahal hills which is located in that place and they called that area daman eko d a m a n daman i dash k o h daman eko okay that means the land of mountains or the, the land of light in this case now army headquarters was made in rambag in 1772 now rambag is very close to rachi okay and this was one of the very important factors because of formation of army headquarters british army headquarters of that area was made at uh, Ram, rambag like for example we know that british army was very much present in jabalpur region of madhya pradesh same as uh, it was present in ramgarh region of near rachi in 1772 and this was the starting point where outsiders the dikus started entering the tribal areas okay now second uh, due to railway line construction uh, there was a major demand for timber for sleepers we know that in 1853 the railways started in india and this revolt is 18 55 and 56 so just like 2 3 years just after the railway started and we know that the first railway was started in uh, the the uh, upper plains of the gangas the roorkee uh, and that region so there was a high demand for timber because this was one of the really good forest areas we still know that this is one of the uh, areas which has got forest as well as natural resources coal uh, the only place where high density of forest as well as coal are formed in india okay so in july 1855 the original inhabitants the santhals attacked the zamindars the mahajans and the government and they called them the unholy trinity with bows arrows axes and sickles as we can see uh, since they attacked with primitive weapons uh, and this was one of the reasons of their failure uh, britishers on the other hand was uh, having guns artillery guns as well as 
uh, cannon balls but in this case they were having bow arrow sickle and axes okay and the leaders of this santhal was sino s i c d o s i d o c d o and khanu k h a n u khanu they were two young uh, tribal uh, men okay they were helped these santhals were held by lower caste and non tribal people as well and around bhagalpur the uh, company the british east india company at that time uh, completely collapsed because of this revolt okay so in bhagalpur region uh, they killed almost all the company members and you know con took control of all the things owned by the company uh, army was therefore mobilized by captain sherwill and martial law was imposed uh in sant and santhal villages were burned one after the another and this was one of the deadliest uh, uh resurrection in which around 30000 to 50000 santhals were killed okay britishers thereafter made santhal a separate administrative unit and this was called as santhal parganas this question was asked in upsc prelims 2018 uh and bonded labor system was abolished and verbal complaints by the tribals were treated as valid in british courts and recognized the distinctiveness of the tribal culture and identity so this is what came after the santhal revolt okay after math of the santhal revolt now conclusion in this if the uh, of santhal rebellion we can write the changing economic relations was the main cause of peasant grievances and their anguish found expression in these various rebellions so this is how we will complete your six marker or three marker questions you can compress it for three marker questions and we'll see how the paper comes in 2020 pattern but this is what you have to read for santhal rebellion uh, the crisp and precise precise material now comes the bisra movement okay so it again starts with the same thing the penetration of the so called outsiders the kuz in chota nagpur region the munda tribe was losing their land day by day and this resulted in a feeling of discontent and unrest among the people okay bisra was a young youth who appeared and raised his voice as he was taught by christian missionaries in that area and was in contact with non tribals he organized a tribal wing against outsiders and he was well versed with the forest ecology so it was very difficult to arrest him okay now the period of 1857 to 1899 was unfortunate in chota nagpur region because of famine diseases and scarcity of forest produce during this time Bisra and his followers performed excellent social services and gained popularity okay Bisra started to advise the tribal people to pursue or to follow their own tribal way of life and tribal religions rather than falling prey to christian or german missionaries at that time impressed by his teachings the people of the area started to worship him as a god okay and sought his blessings many a times on the eve of christmas in 1899 several police stations and missionaries offices came under the attack of bisra fighters who were basically trained by bisra munda and some of his colleagues bisra was finally captured and later died in jail due to cholera in june 1900 at the tender age of 24 years okay in 1908 the colonial government because of this bisra movement introduced the chota nagpur tenancy act cnt which prohibited the transfer of tribal land to non tribals so the effect of or aftermath of this tribe bisra movement was chota nagpur tenancy act which was formulated which, which, which came out in 1908 okay now one interesting fact about the bisra uh, bisra munda is that he is the only tribal leader whose portrait hangs in the parliament house in india okay only tribal leader now conclusion of bisra movement is 
tribal movements were precursors to revolutionary nationalistic movement and these movement shook the very foundation of british empire before nationalistic leaders raised their slogans of swaraj okay so this is how we can conclude the answers of in when it comes to bisra movement or uh, bisra munda okay now the last topic i am going to discuss here is bundela rebellion this bundela Re rebellion of 1842 it is concentrated or it is focused only on the madhya pradesh area okay so here what happened was there were thakurs of bundelkhand along with lodhis the gond tribe plus jagirdars and zamindars all of them were fighting against britishers so all of these things versus britishers in this case the bundela rebellion of 1842 here thakurs literally meant a person or individual entitled to reverence or respect generally applied to a person of rank of authority as a lord a chief or a head of the village can be a and but most of the case the thakurs were basically rajputs okay but thakur at that time was uh, a a titular uh, you can say title which was given which which could be given to anyone a, a village head a, a lord a chief of feudal nobles okay now the important players so the important uh, players of this rebellion was first was raja hridaya shah judev of hiragarh which is currently narsingpur of madhya pradesh he was the main figure then madhukar shah bundela of narhat this place is in sagar madhya pradesh then jawahar singh bundela of chandrapur then amar singh manto and gond raja dilhan shah of madanpur these were the important players raja hirday shah judev madhukar shah bundela jawahar singh bundela amar singh manto and gond raja dilhan singh of madanpur so what happened was on 6th june 1842 five british officers were hanged in mau tehsil of chitrakoot and the reason was cow slaughter okay reference can be found of this event in banda gazetteer as news spread nearby some areas also came in conflict with the revolutionary fire okay now the rebellers burned the government records on 15th june 1842 and killed officer corkel one british officer named corkel after that the rebellers established a war council so 1842 we are, and we are talking about something called as war council in, at the time in india and declared bundelkhand as an independent region okay the rebellion was successful in the sense that it continued till 1843 they later on used guerrilla warfare tactics to hide themselves in this regions okay but by the time the rebellion got less energetic the reason was lack of resources biggest reason in most of the tribal revolts in india and reward scheme for rebellions at the time 500 rupees was given as a reward for you know uh, giving name of the person so raja hirday shah judev was awarded rupees 500 on his head if someone gave information about raja uh, hirday shah judev okay uh, then he was arrested raja uh, hirday shah judev and he was later released on the promise of never revolting again but but he again revolted in 1857 war of independence as is called by vd savarkar okay and he later died in 1858 okay the main reasons of bundela rebellion was arrest of the main leaders in due course of time and many small leaders sided with the britishers and they gave information about these uh, uh, main players of this rebellions main characters of this rebellion to britishers and as a result the uh, rebellion lost its space uh, that's what that's all for today's lecture friends and uh, just let me know in uh, comment and Uh, box that what i have to improve in these lectures and will be conducting all my lectures in um, english completely english language thank you all for watching and all the best for your exams uh, here anak jain signing off from nidhishree academy have a good day